Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm having Mexican food. Um, I have a wet burrito here. Um, it's chicken with like salsa and sour cream and cheese on top. And then I have a chicken quesadilla with like some guac and sour cream tomato and some chips and salsa. And then I have some more green salsa here. I have some extra sour cream on this side just in case I need it. And then an horchata. Horchata is like a cinnamon rice milk. Alright, so it took me a while to set up. Um, so we'll see. I might need to get a knife. I don't know. I, this is my first time having their wet burrito. Yeah, the food has um, cooled down quite a bit. Um, uh, struggle bus. I'm gonna get a real fork. All right, I got some real utensils today. This is, what is going on? <laughs> mm. Chicken. That's like all tortilla right there. I, so I think inside of this is just chicken and salsa. I'm trying to get like a good... There we go. some sour cream on that. Mm. It also doesn't help that I'm left-handed. Okay. This salsa looks a bit different. Looks almost like an enchilada sauce. I think they use canned, yeah I don't think this is like homemade, I think they use like canned tomatoes. Red. And then chicken quesadilla. This is the end piece so. It's not going to have. It's not going to have a whole lot of filling.
scoop up some of that sauce. Mmm, they gave me the butt of the tomato. Their guacamole looks different. Let's try it. <clears throat> dump the green salsa in here. <clears throat> See there's a bit more chicken in there. Living my best life. Ain't home back and forth with you. Okay, so I thought I'd talk about this one time. Got a little story time for you guys. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I've been going back and forth ever since I first started my channel whether or not I should share this story with you guys. But it's something that happened to me. It's true to me. So <clears throat> here it goes. Um, this, this food is actually pretty good. Okay, so this happened when I was 15 years old. It was the summer after freshman high school, freshman, my freshman year. Um, I think my mom was out of town or something. I don't know. So I had recently like gotten in trouble for having friends over while my family was in Reno. <clears throat> but my dad had allowed me to go out. So I went to the park, um, I met up with some friends, I met up with a friend, and I was supposed to be home by 10 o'clock. So we pretty much stayed at the park all day. I was gonna make it home on time um, to beat my dad's curf my dad's curfew, but on the way home, I was by myself. On the way home, I got stopped um, by this car. Mm. 
So I go up to it. Being the dumb teenager that I was, I go up to it and there's these guys in it and they're like, hey, do you want a party? We got some weed. Let's go smoke. I didn't know who they were. So, man, me being dumb, I was like, hell yeah, let's go. I lied about my age. These were older men. <clears throat> um, well, the one driving was older. The passengers were young. They were probably like maybe a couple years older than me. So we drive, and I know what part of town we're in, but I don't know it like that much. I have an idea of where I'm at, but not 100% sure. So we go, and at this point I'm thinking, okay, you know, we're just going to smoke, and you know, I'll ask them to take me home. So we hotbox it. And then, by this time, you know, I told my story, oh, you know, I'm supposed to be home by 10. My dad, you know, I'll get in, big, I'll get in trouble if I'm not home by 10. And I still live with my parents because they thought I was 18, you know. And um, so we smoke or whatever, we hot box, and then we go, we end up going to his place, and then the other kids that were my age, they left. And so I'm thinking, okay, when are you going to take me home? And he said he just had to run inside to get something real quick and left me downstairs. I think he lived with his sister. <clears throat> so... And this was like 2000, 2001. I want to say it was 2001. I didn't have a cell phone. I couldn't call anybody. Um, yeah, so, and it was late. It was past 10 o'clock by this point. And so I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And then his sister comes out and was like, oh, you can sleep in here. And there was an empty room. There was no furniture in the room. There was nothing. And I was like, well, he said he was going to take me home. You know, I, I need to go home. And she's like, oh, he's too faded to drive you. He'll take you in the morning. So I'm thinking, fuck, you know. I don't know who any of these people are. I can't walk home. I don't exactly know where I'm at. And... He was telling me that he was heading to Reno in the morning. Talking about how he was going to make a lot of money and all this. And, you know, I should come. <clears throat> and I was just like, oh, you know, that's cool. You know, whatever. Just trying to make small talk. So, this was while we were in the car hot boxing so I'm like fuck it I go in the room and I'm like I'm not thinking anything really but there was one time when we were outside before we went inside um, this kid was trying to talk to me and the older guy that I was with 
he was like, he was like, don't look at them like that. Like what? He's like, I could see the way he was looking at you. I don't want you looking at them like that. I was like, what the hell? But at the same time, I was thinking, oh, maybe, you know, they're like bad kids. They're in a gang or something, you know, and he don't want me talking to them. So, and this happened so many years ago, and I was high, so the details might be a little bit off. So basically, I was in this room by myself. I get woken up in the middle of the night by some guy and he's like wants to have sex pretty much and I'm like what the fuck and he's like he's like um, the guy told me you know to come down here And at this point, I was scared. I was like, I was thinking I was going to get raped or something. But the guy was actually really nice. He didn't force me to do anything. He asked me if I was taking birth control because he didn't have any condoms. And I was just like, no. And he's like, well, have you been tested? I was like, no. <laughs> oh, my God. So he was kind of upset, but he didn't. He didn't do anything and he left <clears throat> well the next morning I wake up and I slept horrible I had to sleep on the floor but I still felt like I wasn't like any sort of real danger because the guy was really nice So the next morning I get woken up by his sister again. She comes into the room and she's like, hey, he wants to talk to you. He's waiting, he's waiting for you in the living room. So I go out and um, he's like, all right, let's go, you know? And he's got a couple bags packed And there's a couple of other, other people with him. So we get in the car and we start driving and I notice that I left my purse, which I didn't have a whole lot. I had bus tickets and like some change or something and my school ID. Um, I left my purse in the car and I see it. And like, there's no bus tickets. There's not anything in it. And so we're driving, we're driving, and then we get on the way to the destination. He um, He's talking about, oh, you should come with us. And I'm like, yeah, you know, but at the same time, I'm like kind of wanting to get away. And he's like, yeah, have you ever, you know, done stuff to another man and he was basically telling me oh you need to do this and you need to do this so that they like it and he's like basically he's like I'm taking you with me to Reno and you're gonna help me make money and at this point I was like fuck and but I was still going along with it and so he's like teaching me like different techniques and like what to charge people and then he drops me off and he's like, as soon as you make $500, call me. He gave me his pager number and 50 cents to use the payphone. So I'm like, yeah, cool, you know, all right, you know, fuck my, fuck my parents, you know. And he's like... If you get caught, you don't know me, you don't know my name, you know, like I'm not gonna go down because of you. 
And I was like, yeah, okay, you know, I won't get caught. So he drops me off. And then turns around. Well, where he drops me off, I, I knew the area. I knew that if I walked up further, that I would know where I was at and be able to get home. So as soon as he's like, I can't see him anymore, I'm just standing there. And as soon as he's gone, I just start running to the street where I know, you know, how to get home. And I'm like kind of like panicking because I'm afraid that he's going to see me running and then like come pick me up or whatever. But he didn't. And I'm not sure how far it was, but it was a good five miles, if not further, from my house. So I'm like running and like jogging and trying to get home as fast as I can. And at the same time, I'm like, oh my God, my parents are going to kill me. My dad's going to kill me. What am I going to tell him? You know, and I was so embarrassed to tell my dad. I got home and this is like, this is like six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. And um, I'm in a tank top and shorts and it's chilly it's a summer day but it's still chilly you know it doesn't get that hot here in Oregon and um, so I make it home I didn't have a bus pass or I didn't have anything to get on the bus and um, I remember there's some houses I was I was walking by and they were asking me if I was okay and I was just like yeah I need to get home like you know just kind of quickly um, brushing them off and not telling them what had just happened and um, so I get home and I basically just tell my dad you know I stayed at a friend's house and I got in so much trouble but I was so embarrassed and just grateful at the same time but I was just so embarrassed to tell my dad I couldn't tell my dad that yeah I went and got high with some strangers and then they tried to get me into sex trafficking and run away to Reno with them so I would never see you guys again like thinking about it now is just like I'm so glad that nothing ever happened and I didn't leave and I didn't get forced into that lifestyle um, and it's so sad like whenever I see girls that go missing or um, like sex trafficking stories girls that make it out it's just like that could have been me and I'm just I'm just so grateful so um, I'm done like I don't want to eat anymore <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm being kind of vulnerable right now and sharing this story with you guys because my parents still don't know. So if they watch this video, they're going to find out. So I'm eating just because like this is, whew. okay, so, um, yeah, sex trafficking is a big deal here in Portland I think we are like one of the top cities I, I could be wrong but it's like a big deal here in Portland um, yeah so that was my story time um, I mean I don't really know what else to say but I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys enjoyed the food I know it was kind of a little bit of a not tragic but it had a happy ending you know um most girls you know aren't as fortunate <clears throat> so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye